So I got a polo now. Um, I guess that makes it official. Makes me the official manager for Sheffield FC. Though, it took about a month to process the order. I mean, how hard could it be to find my house? I manage the team. What's going on, guys? It's Gendo here. Hope you're having a good day, and welcome back to another episode of The World's First. You're still enjoying the series? Of course, hit that like button. Now, today, of course, we have the match versus the first place, Yeovil Town. And then in the FA Cup, we actually drew against an old foe, Boston United. Yes, we get to see them once again. They're still in the Vanarama National League, so all signs point to this being a little bit on the easy side, but of course, there are no easy matches when you're Sheffield FC. And taking a look at the schedule, since last we left off, of course, it was the very disappointing loss to Colchester. We have done pretty well for ourselves. Three wins, two draws, and one loss in the league, with the other loss unfortunately coming in the John Stones paint trophy. We got knocked out by Doncaster Rovers by a score of 3-1. It wasn't even close. It was more of a rotated side. Doncaster, I'm pretty sure they put out a rotated side as well. Just shows that their second string was better than our second string. But that's okay. We're out of one cup competition, so that means we can focus more on the league and put all of our attention on that. Of course, we got the FA Cup coming up, but more on that later. Three wins and two draws. Unfortunately, not a one of those sides were a top 10 side at this point in time. Our only top 10 team that we faced was against MK Dons. And, of course, we lost against them. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Anthony Steer and Paul Batchelor have been lighting it up. They've been scoring at least a goal a game between each other. Uh, Oldham, as you can see, Steer, Batchelor getting goals there. Crew, Batchelor got one. Steer got one against Chesterfield. And, and Hartley Pool, eh, yeah, Jack Sr. got that one there. But against Wickham, Sam Kelly got one there. So what I'm saying is Steer and Batchelor have combined for at least a goal a game over this run of matches and to be fair that's fine that that's what their job is they're strikers after all they're supposed to be the goal scorers and it's a nice complimentary striker tandem up front too i have anthony steer the advanced four just sticking it past the back line and pressuring the goalkeeper and then when the defensive line doesn't know what to do he can drop it back to paul bachelor the defensive forward who is sitting in the box like right at the top of the box lays it off to him and he can strike it from distance because he has that type of ability and after those three wins, two draws, and a loss, that sees us still in 18th place. But we have a nice gap between us and the drop zone. We have 21 points through 16 matches. We are eight points clear of the drop, which is nice for this time of year. And possibly extend that? Who knows? Mid-table? Maybe? We'll have to wait and find out. And we've been doing this without the help of either Stuart Rennie or Rob Foster at any given time, one of them is injured, which is really unfortunate for Stewart because I brought him in to basically play as more of a backup rotation option to Anthony Steer whenever he gets tired. Stuart Rennie is a nice goal scorer. It just sucks that he continues to find himself injured, and that's mostly why he's unhappy. I'm not playing him because he is injured. Hopefully he can get some game time later on the season. Maybe even today, who knows? And this is one of those times where I very well will start Stuart Rennie because it's a cup, doesn't really affect the league standing all that much. Plus, I can give a couple of my players that I rarely play some decent runouts. So we're going to have Jack Bonham in nets. We're going to have Marsh Brown, Angel Rowley, and Sam Kelly along the back line. Yes, Sam Kelly playing defense today. That's because Jack Sr. is suspended. Good for you. In the middle, we have Amena, Gamblin, Bassett, and Jack Steele. And then up front, Stuart Rennie taking the place of Anthony Steer alongside Paul Batchelor. Hopefully, this is a squad that can get the business done against a Vanarama National League side in Boston United. As I said before, we faced Boston United before. We know how they play. So hopefully, we can use that knowledge to the best of our ability and come away with the win, get to the second round of the FA Cup. So let's kick off, see what happens. In a match such as this, we should be winning it no problem. Batchelor just missing the outside of the post. It was great that we got a corner and we have another one right here. Maybe we can avenge that. Bachelor can't really do anything, but at least we're putting the pressure on Boston early. Rennie wins himself another corner. Boston on an attack, but it's good clearance away from Marsh Brown. Long ball up to Stuart Rennie. What can we do here? Uh, he's a striker. He's not in the best of positions. Bachelor out to steal. Steal, don't shoot it. Pass it into the box. You did exactly what I didn't want you to do. I don't want this to go to a replay. Gambling, get it in there. It's cleared away, but Bachelor has the ball. Out to Bassett. 
Ali Bassett, what can he do inside a Bachelor? He's he needs to find better passing lanes. He's trying to shoot it, but he sees a wall of yellow. Bassett up to Bachelor. There's still three minutes left in this half. There's still time to get a goal. Steele gets it ahead to Sam Kelly, who could put in a decent cross. He finds Stuart Rennie. Far post! Stuart Rennie with the goal, putting Sheffield Ups FC into the lead. 1-0, finally. We have had nine shots already, almost 60% of the ball. And it just took so long. And it was so agonizing that we didn't get anything out of it. But a far post cross from Sam Kelly finds Stuart Rennie. Goalkeeper couldn't do anything about it. And it's 1-0 to the good and that's what we're going to come up to at halftime 1-0 to Sheffield we're bossing Boston there really is nothing I want to change let's just go right back out there and see the rest of this match out corner coming in Jack Amena trying to get across and it falls to Bachelor. Bachelor getting across the face of goal it's his 10th goal for the club and it's 2-0 to Sheffield and like I said we're just rolling all over Boston and finally things are clicking there's a great corner in from Amena. Bachelor rises high as the goalkeeper almost, almost got a hand to it to punch it away, but just couldn't deal with it. And it's 2-0 to Sheffield. 59 minutes gone. Steel inside to Bachelor, but there's so many yellow shirts in front of him. A wall of yellow. And Lex to go out wide to Marsh Brown. Inside to Amena. Can he do a 1-2 with Marsh Brown? Or is he going to put across? He does. He finds Jack Steele. It's just out. Would have been a great third goal. 30 seconds left to go in this match. It's been relatively quiet this entire second half, except for the lone goal, of course. But it looks like we're going to get the 2-0 victory, and we're going to see ourselves into the second round. And the referee blows the whistle for full time. It's Sheffield 2, Boston United 0. And with that, like I said, second round of the FA Cup is booked. Now, who are we going to face? I don't know. Could be another easy draw like Boston. Cross fingers, hopefully it is. Oh, hey, have an FA Cup second round draw where I'm just going to press draw all teams because I can't be arsed to press draw next team for eternity. So who are we going to get in the second round? Aha, right at the top. Wow, that would have not taken very long at all. Sheffield versus Southend in the second round. Southend, a League 2 side. How are they doing in League 2? They are bottom. Southend are bottom of League 2. So they might as well be a National League side. So it's not going to be that much different than facing Boston United. That's a good draw. I can see ourselves getting into the third round. Cross fingers and all that. But now let's actually get into the match versus Yeovil. All right, so now we have the true test of our medal coming up. We're going up against first place Yeovil. I made several changes, and here's how they're going to be laid out. Bottom's going to be a net still, but we have Baba, Arthur, Beedling, and Senior along the back line. We have Amena, Gallagher, Bassett, and Kelly along the midfield. And, of course, Anthony Steer is taking his rightful place back at the top of the box with Paul Batchelor sitting right behind him. It's going to be difficult. We all know it's going to be difficult, but if we can at least get a point versus the league leaders i'll take it that's what i'm hoping for it's pretty unlikely but that's what i'm hoping for so let's cross our fingers and hope let's kick off and see what happens just about a half hour and there hasn't been much of anything in terms of highlights we've had five shots apparently yovo have had three but nothing on target 37 minutes on now we have the ball in the first highlight of the game bachelor slips it through to steer but steers offside Ugh. but now on the other end yovel what are they gonna do thompson gets in through to ronan uh doesn't really get a good shot but is blocked away twice by sheffield defenders and maybe we can hit him on the counter attack here bachelor not in a good spot but gets it ahead to bassett he does have a couple of red shirts ahead of him but that's a great tackle Halftime, and for the most part, it's been very uneventful, believe me. Just those couple of highlights, couple of shots here and there, but really, it's still nil-nil, and we're still, at this point, going to get a point out of it. Just something, but at the same time, we need to turn around and do something on the attacking end, on the offensive end. My strikers are not really doing much. That's because, whoa! Oh my god, what a powerful strike from McAnderson! or McAdelin, whatever it is, but the rebound went right to Ronan, and Yeovil have the early lead. I think Bonham took this cannon off the face. It was such a powerful shot. And rebounds right to a green and white hooped shirt, and it's 1-0. And in the next breath, Noah Baba goes off injured. Tom Beedling's the only one that can really fill that spot. So then we're going to switch out a center back, and we're going to put in Liam Angel. 
and hopefully all goes well with that. At least we can, you know, shore up the defense, hopefully only just give up that one goal. Yovel on the ball, looking very dangerous. Some decent passing here, but it's a good tackle from Angel. Apparently, apparently, that's a fa Are you serious? You just got subbed on! He literally got subbed on five minutes ago. Great! I mean... Right, so we're going to drop Gallagher down and, you know, at least have four at the back, but he's going to have to be subbed off for Kyle Rowley. We're going to have three in the middle, Kelly Bassett and Amena, and then, of course, have the two strikers up top, Steer and Bachelor. but it's not looking good. Our chances of equalizing at this point have severely diminished to slim, quite possibly none, but there's still 33 minutes left to go out. Penny into the box. It doesn't really find anybody. It went over every single red shirt's head and allowed to go to a Yeovil player, and it's 2-0 to Yeovil. What was everybody thinking? Look at that. Not a single red shirt in the area of where the ball bounced. Honestly, I'm going to pause this. Even with 11 men, that still would have happened. It's not a, it's not a matter of dropping down to 10 because even with 11 men, that shit still would have happened. You need to defend that better. 14 minutes left to go, and Yeovil, they're still coming forward. They're looking for a third goal. McAlinden, and they do find a third goal. We're on the high of, well, admittedly beating up a team divi two divisions lower than us. And we go up against the first place team, and we get absolutely spanked. Doesn't help that we have a guy dropped because of a red card. And the ref's going to blow his whistle. Goalkeeper doesn't even get his kickoff. It's 3-0 Yeovil. And admittedly, at the end of the day, we did give up a goal with 11 men. So who's to say who's to say that it wouldn't have ended up like this, even if we had 11 men on the pitch? Doesn't matter because he was subbed on in the 52nd minute, Liam Angel, and he gets a red card five minutes later. It's unacceptable. It's what it is. And you can be damn sure he's going to be dropped for the next couple of matches. I don't care if he's one of my better center backs. He's going to be dropped. After the suspension, he's not going to play for the next couple matches. I want to teach this guy a lesson. And if that means sitting him down, then that means sitting him down. Anyway, let's take a look and see who we're going to be facing next episode. Oh my god, are you serious? My defensive line is still pretty bad. He was the lone beacon of the shit show that was the defensive line. Now that he's gone, I gotta rely on Marsh Brown for the next three months. I'm not happy. All right, so this is what the schedule looks like for the next couple of months. Of course, we have the FA Cup match coming up versus Southend, but we do have like big matches versus Luton, versus Preston, Wigan, Swindon. In fact, this is when I'm going to be coming back. Swindon and Birmingham City will be the next two matches. Yes, they're two top 10 teams, and yes, I may not do well versus top 10 teams, but you know what? We can't get better unless we prove ourselves versus these top 10 teams. So that's why we're going to be facing them in the next episode. So until that time, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, of course, smash that like button. It lets me know that you are still interested in the series. And of course, subscribe if you're new. And any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else at all, please leave in the comment box below. But as always, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.